In the real beginning, we came to be about 100,000 or 150,000 years ago. But we Homo sapiens are restless, and about 40,000 years ago, we began to move out of Africa a little at a time. Some of us went north and turned along the Mediterranean coast of Europe. Some of us pressed eastward into what we now call Iran and China. Some moved down into the area along the Pakistan-India coastline, and everywhere we went, we hunted and gathered, and we really did live in a Garden of Eden of sorts because we simply followed the food from garden to garden. We had beliefs, of course, but religion? We have no idea what people thought 30,000 years ago. They left behind enough to let us know that they thought something, but what? We found thousands of carved figures they made in those times, from Spain to Russia and down into India, and nearly all of them are female figures abstract and usually just a couple of inches tall. They were just the right size to hold in your hand. But are they about something they couldn't see? A power behind it all? It would be nice if they wrote something for us, but writing didn't exist yet. Everything started to change 13,000 years ago with the Ice Age. The gardens of Europe were frozen out, and the people who lived there barely survived. Things were better in the Fertile Crescent and in the river basins of China. People began to plant and harvest, first in Turkey and Syria, and then southward into the Levant and Mesopotamia and into the Indus River Valley. It seems coincidental that the same thing happened around the same time in China. It was a seismic shift in human existence. And still we don't know what their religion was. They didn't write either. That finally came to be 5,000 years ago, in Mesopotamia and in Egypt. Finally, we can know something about their stories, their accounts of Ra and Hathor and Isis, and Inanna and Enki and Anu, Yangdi and Changshi and Dizong, Baal and Ishtar and Moloch. Somewhere through the millennia, the powers that lay behind the visible world had been embodied in stories. And with the stories came a new way of connecting to the powers. Temples were built and gifts were made and the unseen became more a part of the familiar world. The stories almost always make the deities a lot like us. They're unpredictable. They lose their tempers. They attack as well as bless. They fight amongst themselves. The stories let us deal with all of that with just a little bit of a poke a chance to laugh at the uncontrollable. The religions that we have in our world today are rooted in that world of myth, and Hinduism, Judaism, the great Chinese religions all begin at the time sacrifices are beginning. Yes, it's a little strange to think that sacrifice only reaches back about 4,000 years ago. It is possible that we sacrifice in order to keep those deities as friends rather than foes, but it probably isn't so much in fear and trembling that we killed those animals as it was in the way we prepare our Thanksgiving dinners. We're inviting the deities to join us in the feast. The stories are invitations, invocations. We call the deities up by telling their stories. But Hinduism, Judaism, and Taoism each see the stories as more than just a way to invoke the stories become thinking devices, and the Upanishads, the Torah, the Shwangsa show us how to explore story in order to see more. And with that, religion as we experience it is born. They all happened in the shadows of history. We just aren't very clear exactly how we got from there to here, or better, from way there to closer to us. But we do know that it all happens about the same time, about 3,500 years ago, and far apart from one another.